Hi there, I'm Linda and this is Hutton's Valley Permaculture. I need to get some of my worm castings processed and ready for use. So today I'm going to show you how I go about that. I'll show you what I do to get the worms out of the castings, the drying process, and then what I do to get it ready for use. So let's get on to it. This is my worm farm bathtub. I've got it positioned on my rock wall garden so that it overhangs. I have the, um, the worm juice that drains out of here into my bucket that I use on the garden. Because I've got my chickens, I don't actually add a lot of my kitchen scraps to this. That always goes up to the chicken yard. But I do find that I have plenty of scraps from the vegetable garden. I don't add it on a daily basis. I just sort of bulk it out um, when I think about it actually. And I also add in some manures, the alpaca manure, cow manure, that sort of thing. And I just make sure that this is fairly full. So I know it's ready to harvest generally when it's sunk down like it has now. After I've harvested the castings, which I'm going to do just from this centre section here, I'll be adding in a lot more food for them. I'm just going to remove the coverings and I've got the cardboard on top to help insulate them from, well, cold and also from heat because heat can do them in as well as if it's too cold. Uh, I've got this tree here which helps protect them from, um, you know, extremes. But the bit of cardboard is a really good idea on top. They will break it down over time, so you do need to replace it. Because I'm only going to process this section here, I'm just going to move all of this bulk material to one side. We don't need that. So I'm just going to move that out the way. A lot of this stuff will come out in the um, sifted product when we get it all dried, and I can sift that out and then I'll just add it back into the worm farm again. You could tip the whole bath out at a time, but it's just, for me, it's just way too much work and um, I'm quite happy just doing this in sections. It's pretty heavy stuff when you get moving it. just go and dump this. It's really heavy. So that's why I don't usually do the whole tub. <sighs> just laid out a smooth surface. I'm going to put my castings here. It does take a little while, so that's why I've made sure it's going to be well protected. Okay, so that's two bucket loads, which is all I'm going to do today. So we're down at the bottom of the worm farm. I've got the fly wire screen here, which holds all the materials off the base. I've also got quite large tree branches underneath. And that's just so that all the material doesn't squash down straight onto the, the base. It allows the, the moisture to drain. So with all of that there, uh, there's nothing impeding the, the moisture flowing out. If there wasn't some drainage in place, this could fill up in heavy rains and just drown all your worms. Now, it's a cool day, so there's no risk that this surface is going to heat up and fry my worms. Otherwise, I wouldn't do it here. But now we've just got to ensure we get all of these worms out from the middle. Worms don't like the light. So the idea is that you pile this up and then just slowly scrape away the, the sides and um, they'll keep moving to the, the centre uh, away from the, the light. And uh, it is a slow process, but eventually you get there with not too many worms left in the final product. Well, that's ready to leave now. I'm just gonna leave it for half an hour. Now that I've got all that going, I'm going to go and get some food for the worm farm. In my winter garden video, I introduced you to what I called my experimental bed, where I'd just thrown in a heap of different seeds. I'm going to start to clear this down. So these daikon um, shoots, instead of throwing it to the chickens this time, I'm going to cut this up and add it to my worm farm. Now 
I've got some weeds in the garden. That is uh, sow thistle, and you can actually pop that in your salads. It is edible. Dandelion is another edible, so they'll make the most of that one. Okay, so that'll do them for the moment. I'll go and throw that into the worm farm, but I'm also gonna add in some um, manure from the pasture. Okay, now I've got that, I'll go out to the pasture and get some manure. Okay, I think half a bucket of manure will be just fine. I like to gather the manure and add it to my worm farm. It kind of bulks out the worm farm. You do risk adding in some seeds, but I generally just gather the sheep manure and the alpaca manure, and I haven't had much trouble um, with the final product and having a lot of seeds in it. By adding in the manure and my other greens from the garden all in one hit, it means I just do it in one hit. I don't go and check on it, you know, on a daily basis. I do clean, clear out the worm juice fairly regularly, but as to the, the tub itself, I just let it do its thing. I've just got to fill the, the tub up again, um, fill in that middle space. I'm not going to spread out the, the castings. Last time I harvested this end, this time in the middle. So the next time I need my castings process, I'm just going to grab from that end. I'm just going to chop this up a bit. You, you probably don't have to do it, but I just like the idea of covering that centre bit nicely. Lots of surface area for the, the worms to work on. By doing the worm farm in thirds and putting food where you've taken out the castings, it actually draws the worms out of the, the future castings that you want to harvest. If you've got the fresh food down one end, the worms will be drawn there so there will be less worms in the, the bit you need to work. That's not quite full. I'll probably be adding some more greens as I clear out the garden just to top it up to the top. I've covered it with the cardboard now, but I do like to insulate the worms a little bit more. And normally I'd put a tarp or something, but I'm trying to avoid tarps just because the plastic does break down and we want less plastic in our environment. So I've got a complete wool carpet that I've cut down to size. And I'm just going to, I'm just going to lay that on top and that will be perfect. That carpet should keep them well protected now. So we've left it for about an hour at this point. There will be still worms in the lumps. As it dries, I'll get the rest of those out. So basically, I'm just kind of taking off the top layer and separating it out. And then the worms will just keep going down the bottom. You just keep scraping off until you get to a point where you're getting too many worms. I'm just breaking up some of the lumps so that the, the worms kind of will move out. There's my worms. So I'm just going to pick all those up and pop them back into the worm farm so that they can continue creating more worm castings for me. That's got quite a few worms in it, so I'm just going to throw it back into the tub. You could spend a lot of time going through this, but um, I don't see the point. So I'll just pop all those back into the tub and um, we'll keep going with this pile. All right, so that's the basic sort done. Now that I've got most of the worms sorted out and back into the tub, I'm just going to spread this out 
and I'm going to leave it to dry because the next process is sifting and it's uh, better if it's really dry. The day after I've spread the castings out and it's been quite cool so far so not quite dry yet but please because there's not too many worms in here. It's been a few days now and my worm castings have dried out sufficiently to go through the sieve. I've got my tub to put the castings into. I've got my old sieve and I've just got my discard bucket for all the bits and pieces that I'll be able to return to the worm farm. I'm just going to push this down, give myself some space to work. There will be still some worms left in this, which I'll try and get out. Okay, so all we need to do to get this sifted is just put the castings into the sieve. It is still quite moist, so I'm just pushing, pushing it through. Some of the lumps will go through the worm farm again because they're uh, not broken down. And there we have it. Lovely worm castings ready to use. If you're not in a hurry for your worm castings, you can just let it sit in a, a spot where it's not going to get wet so that they really dry out and that um, makes it a lot easier to, to sift out all the, the big pieces. Okay, I've got my bucket of worm castings all sifted now and that's ready for use. That's my final compost. Some big bits have sort of got through and some worms have managed to get in there too, but it's really nice and fine. It's actually a lot easier to sift when it's um, a bit drier than this. We're in my greenhouse now where I do store my worm castings. This is my last lot, so I've still got quite a bit here. I use my worm castings for a couple of things. One of my main uses for the worm castings is refreshing uh, potting mix. For seedlings that have failed or just, you know, they've dried out, they haven't worked for whatever reason. So I'll just put them into a container, clean up the trays a bit and chuck it all in, break it all up a bit and then I'll just add in some worm castings just to give it a bit of life once again. I'll certainly uh, just moisten all of that before I, I use it. But the other main way I use my um, worm castings is for fertilizing my indoor plants or plants in pots. I'll either use my sifted compost, which I've shown you before, or sometimes I'll just add some worm castings to the top. So it just gives it a bit of a boost, really. I hope you found something interesting in seeing my worm castings process. It is a bit time consuming, but it does give you a really valuable resource. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already and hit the notify button so that you'll be kept up to date with all things around the farm. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Thanks again for watching and bye for now.